This is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WVAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, uh, 2.04 of the time. Welcome to the Court of Public Opinion, the Rick Roberts Show. Hope uh, hope you had a good weekend. Uh, I've been following this since Saturday. Evidently, teenagers all over the country, coast to coast, are walking out of school protesting. Not sure what they think they're going to accomplish, but uh, they're protesting nonetheless. Um, the shooting in Parkland has uh, sparked a movement for students around uh, the country over the last several days. Many have protested by uh, planning lie-ins where they lay down, pretend like they're dead, and walkouts of uh, out of class. A group of students at uh, Shepton High School in Plano um, planned a walkout to draw attention on the need for policy change within the school districts. Now, here's a quote. We've been talking about the issue for a while, Luke Cabell, I guess his name is, he's a sophomore at the high school. He's 15 year old, uh, 15 years old. He's the student organizer over the planned protest. Well, Clayton Neville from the WBAP newsroom is uh, on the scene. And Clayton, what can you tell us? What are they doing there? That's right, Rick. Well, the walkout just ended probably within the last half hour or so. There are about 100 students that walked from the high school onto the tennis courts. Uh, they had signs. Uh, they went over uh, several different chants, and they also took some moments of silence for the 17 victims killed uh, in the Florida shooting. Uh, their overall purpose, I spoke with two uh, ladies, uh, both sophomores who were a part of the walkout. They said the purpose is to draw attention uh, to their message here, which is, one, that they want their voices heard, and two, that they would like some more gun control laws and that they would like better security. They said they don't feel safe going to school, and they want local leaders and federal leaders to know uh, that they aren't going to settle for anything less than some type of change. They said also within that protest, not only did they hold signs, chant, and uh, remember the victims, but they also encouraged one another to write letters to their state representatives and congressmen. They said it's not going to be accomplished just by these walkouts. We need to take further action and put pen to paper here and, and let our uh, authorities know that we're not backing down anytime soon. Okay. Uh, have, they get, have you heard any kind of specifics? I mean, I, I've heard about the walkouts. We want change. Uh, but I'm not clear on what kind of change they want or more gun control. Uh, any specifics at all other than we want our voices heard? Well, I think that, that uh, that's really the gist of it. When you get into the specifics of it, some of the students from Parkland, uh, Florida, have gotten into some specifics as far as you know more gun control with mental health issues and things like that. Right. Here today from um, Shepton, what we're hearing is more just they want people to unite together to encourage this type of change, and they want people to know that they're not going to back down. The uh, mantra of, you know, if the leaders don't give us change, then we're going to vote them out uh, type thing has been heard quite a bit in some of these protests. But today I heard more than just the gun control, although we did hear that. We also heard um, more security. You know, they uh, one person brought up the fact, you know, you have these air marshals on flights, and, you know, 10 years ago, that wasn't welcome, or 15 years ago, that wasn't necessarily welcome, but it was necessary, and that's what they had to do. So why can't they do what it takes to protect these schools? That's something else that I'm hearing. Gotcha. Uh, Clayton Neville, um, uh, reporter with WBAP News, uh, on scene at the uh, at the high school, Shepton High School, where there was a, uh, a walkout. And, and Clayton, they've gone back to class, is that right? Yeah, they have got back into class. Now, this is something that's been brewing, obviously, here for about a week and a half or so. And the students told me that administrators at first were discouraging this, but the students continued to voice how they really felt this was important and they wanted their voices heard. So the students and the administrators compromised, and they said, okay, if today's the day you're going to do it, go ahead and do it. But instead of walking completely off campus, 
We're going to fence off an area of the tennis courts, and if you need to, feel free to go ahead and do it there and make them fly it, and that's where it happened. All right. Clayton, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, that's Clayton Neville live uh, from the high school. Uh, I, I, you know, I, you know, it sounds like uh, compared to the rest of these walkouts around the country, um, this one in Plano at least was somewhat organized, and they did go back to class. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's to be gained by all of these walkouts. Um, I think the majority are, are simply following the crowd. Um, more school security, absolutely. Um, more uh, more control when it comes to background checks with the mentally ill, um, that should be a given. If it's not in place, it should be. Um, raising the age of gun ownership, I don't think uh, anyone is necessarily for that except uh, the governor of Florida. Um, I, I'm not big on students walking out, I guess. Uh, it's uh, all those years watching schools uh, empty out on Cinco de Mayo in California and the Mexican flag being paraded up and down the street uh, when, you know, I, I did something out there. I sent one of my um, one of my assistants, uh, we had a, a ton of people on the show, out to uh, talk to these people. And the Hispanics that were walking out of school on Cinco de Mayo carrying the flag, um, well, what are you celebrating? Mexican Independence Day. Well, that's not what Cinco de Mayo is. Cinco de Mayo has to do with a battle, um, but none of them knew it. You know, I, I don't see much reason in uh, in walking out of class unless, of course, uh, there's there's something to be gained. Um, we want to be heard. Okay, well, obviously you are being heard because the uber-liberal media is falling all over itself every time, you know, a kid has something to say. Um, once again, exploiting the true victims in this. Um, I guess the uh, the kid that was in charge or organized the walkout today is 15 years old. It's it's. I forgive me, but it sounds kind of silly to say, do what we want or we're going to vote you out of office. You can't vote yet. And it's going to be three or four years before you can. So um, is it a good idea? Uh, you know, to a point, perhaps, but I think we can get, uh, you know, wrapped up into this where uh, it gets to the point of diminishing returns. Sometimes kids need to be treated like kids. That's not to say that we turn a deaf ear to them. You shouldn't do that. Um, but to try and treat them like little adults makes no sense either. All right, 12 minutes after the hour, I'll get to your calls. Some of you have a lot to say on this. Uh, walkouts all over the country uh, for more gun control, but very little specifics um, being used in, this, uh, in these walkouts in these speeches. Your calls straight ahead. All right, 17 minutes after the hour, 217 the time. 1 800 288 WBAP, 1 800 288 9227. No, I'm not being cold hearted. I'm not being insensitive. I'm not trying to be a jerk. But by the same token, teenagers are teenagers, they're not little adults. Um, and I think, uh, you know, the media being what it is, uh, anything they can uh, they can get away with as far as exploiting these kids. Uh, you're for gun control, right? Yes, I am. Do you know what gun control is? No, I don't. Okay, cut that. Uh, it's it's obvious. You know now the uber liberal media is using uh, <laughs> is using kids. Um, yeah, they need to be heard, and I'm sure they've got concerns, but we need to be very careful here that we don't turn everything over to children. Uh, all right, let's go to Brad. Brad, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, Brad? All right, and how are you today, Rick? Good. Okay, several years ago at the Kansas City Convention, Wayne LaPierre, um, in one of his speeches, indicated that he thought, and I think this was 2002, 2003, that the left was willing to deal with a certain amount of violence in order to... Uh, 
move their agenda forward. We're now 15 years later, <clears throat> we've seen a half a dozen multi-casualty situations. And for lack of a better term, I'm I'm thinking that this indeed is is the uh, is the truth, and if it and if it is the truth, and I and I'm guessing that you agree with me on it, what is the end game? Okay, I'm not exactly sure what you're you're categorizing as truth. What what is it you're saying? Well, I'm saying that the left seems to be willing to sacrifice or willing to tolerate a certain amount of violence in order to advance their agenda. Uh, I, I think that's a, a totally inane statement. I don't know how you prove it one way or the other. I don't think they had anything oh, to do with setting okay. it up. It's 20 well, years l- since let, let me Let me finish right. here. I, I don't think they had anything to do with setting any of this up, and their response is their response, uh, which is more gun control and you know more security and, and all of that. I, I, I guess I don't – I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Number one, I'm, I try to be a realist. But, uh, you know, it's not a matter of whether they, they're willing to accept this or that. It's the way they react to, to something that happens. Well, wouldn't you agree that it advan- these events advance their agenda? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I can't measure that. I mean, I don't think that can be measured. Um, be, every time something like this happens, uh, gun, owner, gun owners uh, become more uh, aware of uh, their guns and keeping them and the anti-gunners you know become more aware of trying to get rid of guns i i you know i i don't know that i buy into that i i don't know that they are in a position to allow or not to allow something to happen um you know that the old adage uh, from the democrats never let a good crisis go to waste is is pretty apropos i mean they may not have anything to do with with making it happen, but they'll get as much political mileage out of it as they can. Well, it's been 20 years since Columbine, and we've been through three, we've been through four different administrations, yet no one seems to be able to get a handle on it. And I think we've reached a day where, yeah, the left wants to grab the guns. The right, of course, is willing to draw the line in the sand at keeping guns. So where do you think this ends up? Uh, I think, it well, under Trump, I think it ends up, well, you're right. It's been 20 years since Columbine. What's been done about school shooting since? Nothing. Zero. Um, I think uh, under Trump, we're going to see more security in the schools. I think you're going to see expanded background checks as far as the mentally ill go. Uh, and I think, uh, well, the banning of the bump stock, which the NRA even agreed on back in Vegas, I, much more than that, I don't see happening. Okay, well, thank you. for Thanks, Rick. Hey, thank you. I appreciate the call very, very much. Um, let's go to Rachel in Grand Prairie. Rachel, thank you for waiting. How how you doing, Rachel? Doing fabulous. Thank you. Are you on speakerphone, Rachel? I am. Let me get off. I, one second. There we go. All right. Now I can hear you. And you got to turn the radio down, too. Okay. Now we're good. Are you there? All right. Well, well okay. Uh, Ed in Dallas. Ed, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Ed? Supernal. My radio is off, and I'm not on speakerphone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, l- right. Let me explain this. Uh, when you're on speakerphone, uh, it comes across very very shallow on the radio and if you don't have the radio off we're on a delay obviously that means what you're hearing out of your radio actually happened about 20 seconds ago so uh you know we have to do that so if you have the radio on we we're not on the same page so that's why we ask people not to use bluetooth not to be on uh, speakerphone and have the radio off now with that said ed how you doing again supernal thank you for taking my call you bet These are impressionable teenagers. They knee jerk to everything in their lives, especially what's going, what happened a couple weeks ago. And then walking out and doing their little protests, they're leaving the safety of the school, which is a pretty safe place to be, but they'll be traveling groups out in public like sheeple. And if anybody, any crazy nut out there knowing that these people are going out there could take their guns and start mowing them down in the street. Now, 
here's the thing. If they want to protest, great, they can protest. But like this uh, thing they're doing in Plano, outside, on the tennis courts, that's setting yourself up as a, as a target-rich environment, okay? And like you were saying about the voting thing, they're not old enough to vote yet. That, that, that's, that's how limited their vision is. Now, as far as the laws are concerned, we have plenty of laws on the books concerning uh, not letting people who are mentally ill have guns or people that commit felonies not to have guns. But the laws are only as good as the people that are supposed to be implementing the laws. So if somebody's getting paid to keep that database up to date and they're not doing their job, then they need to get fired and get somebody in there that can do the job correctly so we don't have that happen. No, I I, I agree wholeheartedly. And there are some people that simply aren't in the system, period. True. But... If they're going to be tracking these people, do the freaking job that is required, and I guarantee you the people that are not supposed to be getting the guns won't be getting the guns. And if you have your, uh, if you have your guns, you keep your guns locked away. Now, this, this uh, kid in uh, Florida got a hold of another key to the gun safe, and so the, the uh, people that took the gun away from the kid put it in the gun safe and locked it away. But somehow the kid got another copy of the key. So the parents were being responsible, or or the guardians were being responsible in keeping the gun out of that kid's hand, but he still wound up getting a key. Yeah, I I mean, there are all all kinds of ways for things to fall through the cracks. I guess, you know, what I'm thinking, you know, kids, and I'm talking 14, 15, 16, even 17-year-olds, um, you know, everybody wants to be a part of something bigger than themselves. This thing in Plano was organized by a 15 year old and that's nice. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to sit here and slam the kid, but he's 15 years old. You know, when he starts talking about, if you don't do what we want, we're going to vote you out of office. Well, you're not going to be doing that for at least three years. You can't vote. Um, if you want something, be very specific about what you want. And at some point go back to class. Uh, and I'm not uh, trying to throw water on on this thing. I'm just simply saying kids are kids. By their very nature, they're going to do goofy things. You know, the adults need to stand up and uh, take charge and, and make this thing work. And the uber-liberal media, they need to stop exploiting um, these children. That's exactly what they are, children. Um, you know, it's been, it's been a while now we've had the walkouts, we've done all this. Uh, it's probably time to get back to work. Um, what do you want to see done as far as change? Yeah, there probably needs to be some change. I'll tell you what I think, and I'll take your calls next. All right. Uh, two 33, the time I'm Rick Roberts. Glad you're along. Hope you had a good weekend. And uh, we're right back in it where we were on Friday. Uh, In Plano, they walked out of class and held a little protest on the tennis courts. And I I don't mean to belittle that. I'm not trying to do that. And I realize when you're a kid, um, you know, things are larger than life. And then you wake up tomorrow and it's a new world every day. Um, These uh, these kids in Plano at the, uh, what's the name of that? Shepton High School. Um, I think for the most part, they, they did okay. They went back to class. Um, it was organized by a 15 year old. There you go. That's, that's fine. Uh, it's what, it's what the uber liberal media does with these kids, you know, say this, don't say that. Uh, how do you feel? I mean, you can get anyone to say anything depending on how you wordsmith the question. And I've seen a ton of that. Um, what are we going to do as far as, uh, school shootings? Okay. This is my idea. All right. You ready? And then I'll take yours. Um, you want to arm teachers? I don't really care one way or the other. If a teacher has demonstrated proficiency in, in firearms and they want to carry, that's fine with me. As long as everybody knows what's going on. I mean, after all, in one of these, you know, God forbid another school shooting teachers are targets too. So, um, if the teachers want to carry, that's fine. Uh, that's not the first line of defense I want to depend on. I want to depend on law enforcement. I think law enforcement uh, should be involved. Uh, at the same time, uh, just like they do in movie theaters, uh, the um, exit doors you can get out of, but you can't get in from the outside. 
Um, well, Rick, that's going to cost money. Well, take some of the money from your pork projects and, and refurbish uh, schools nationwide. Uh, make exit doors, those theater type doors that you can get out, but not get in. So you got law enforcement, you've got, uh, control of ingress and egress as far as uh, schools are concerned. Um, and yeah, I think the background checks ought to be expanded to the point where we actually get the information we're searching for. Um, from an individual, that's not going to, you know, no luck. That's not going to solve everything. Some people aren't in the system to begin with. You know, the shooting in, uh, uh, in that church in Texas, that guy should have never had a gun, but the military didn't, uh, advise, you know, the private sector, what was going on. Um, but that happens all the time, uh, in, in bureaucracies like government. So that probably needs to be looked at, but that's my, you know, short of that, you know, banning bump stocks, I think that doesn't bother me at all. Um, as far as anything else, I, you know, raising the age of ownership, I don't know that that necessarily would do anything. I know the governor of Florida think that thinks that's a good idea. I, you know, I, I, to be honest with you, I really don't have a feeling on that. If you own a firearm now, it probably wouldn't apply to you because this would be uh, for purchasing. So there you go. Uh, law enforcement in the schools um, control the ingress and egress uh, of these schools as far as, uh, you know, who can come in and and uh, how they come in. Um, and, uh, you know, take a look at the background checks. That's, uh, you know, I don't know what you can do other than that. I don't, I don't, well, Rick, what about banning those scary looking rifle? Okay. Well, again, that's the reason I invited, uh, Mayor Rawlings and, and Mayor Pro Tem Caraway to come out to Eagle Gun Range so they can put hands on and look at these so-called scary firearms. Um, Caraway initially, well, let's ban the AR-15. Uh, why? It's, you know, no more, uh, dangerous than 150 other rifles that look scary too, uh, but they're not fully automatic. They're, you know, that's, that's not the issue. The issue is to probably educate people instead of, uh, automatically banning something that you know nothing about. So as far as I'm concerned, I think that's probably all we can do at this point. You know, other than changing the human heart, and that's going to take some doing. And, uh, putting value back in human life, uh, you know, it took uh, a few decades to get rid of that. It's going to take a few decades to put it back. That's really the only way that you ever cure this type of uh, this type of problem. But we can't do that overnight. So in the meantime, put cops in schools, um, control um ingress and egress getting in and getting out of schools uh take a look at the background checks uh do a little better job of uh cleaning up when if somebody's been institutionalized or being unstable they probably don't need a need a firearm well rick you can't say but that's my opinion i mean that's just my opinion um other than that i i don't know what else would make any difference um all right let me get to your calls hank Hank, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Hank? Great, Rick. Thanks for taking my call. And I think, uh, you know, this whole gun thing has gone on too damn long. And from my aspect as uh, a veteran and uh, huntsman and so forth, uh, I'm saying that there should be a federal law from the standpoint of saying, you know, you cannot possess or transport a weapon capable of more than 10 rounds. And I'm saying that from the standpoint that the 94 to, uh, to 2004 ban was on the 10-round uh, uh, deal. And that was apparently for the, the AR business. But I'm saying for everything, no matter, you know, if you've got a revolver, if you've got a... a, a Semiotic, semi-automatic weapon, be it, you know, pistol or long gun. Okay, so uh, what what is it you're saying? Ban, ban, uh, what, more than 10-round magazines? No, I'm saying to ban any weapon carry, any weapon possessed or transported in public, quote-unquote, from being capable of firing 
Okay, stop, than... stop, stop for a second, Hank, because uh, I'm not on the same page with you. Uh, you want to okay. ban any uh, firearm that's capable of shooting more than ten rounds? Right. Okay, that makes no, that makes it doesn't it doesn't matter, <laughs> Hank. That makes no right, sense. Right. I can I can uh, take a semi-automatic pistol and fill my pockets up with uh, ten round mags and do just as much damage as anybody else. Um, you know, it's not the, it, uh, you know, that's a misnomer. Well, while he's changing uh, magazines, we'll jump on him. It takes like a second. Uh, you press a button, the clip falls out, you throw another one in, you're back in business. I mean, you're talking about a second to change um, a, a clip in a handgun or in a rifle for that matter. So, uh, yeah, I don't think people need to be walking around with, you know, 50-round magazines. I don't even know if they make 50-round magazines. But, um, you know, banning, I never understood that. I never understood, well, we need to ban all, uh, you know, clips that hold more than 10 rounds. Obviously, that was thought up by somebody that's never fired a firearm uh, that realizes how quickly you change magazines. It's It's not about the guns. You know, you can't walk in and buy a... For the most part, you can't walk in and buy a fully automatic uh, rifle. So, you know, that part to me is taken care of. Um, you know, for as far as school shootings are going uh, are concerned, put a cop in there, um, you know, redo the doors. And that's about as good as you're going to do. I mean, if teachers want to carry, that's fine. I wouldn't mandate it. But if they want to, that's uh, I got no problem with that. 242 the time. Hank, thanks for the call. Your call's next. All right, uh, 2.46 the time. Welcome to the Court of Public Opinion, the Rick Roberts Show. Uh, I mean, at some point, we've, we've got to get back to normal, right? I mean, it's a tragedy what happened in Florida. Personally, based on what I've read, there were enough red flags to, uh, uh, to, to cut this steer out of the herd, so to speak. The cops went to his house 39 times. What was it, in five years? Yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's probably an indicator that you got a problem. But of course, the uber liberal, liberal movement in this country, well, you can't do this and you can't do that. You can't incarcerate somebody, you can't institutionalize somebody. We don't have insane asylums anymore uh because you know, that's uh that's an infrig- infringement on their rights. Um 39 times in 5 years. Yeah, that it seems to me that somebody might have dropped the ball there. Uh, Jim in Chico. Jim, where are you calling from? Well, right now I'm in uh, Bells, Texas. I live in Chico, Texas. I drive a truck, and I pulled over on the side so as to not be moving or having to use Bluetooth. First okay. Off, I appreciate it. Uh, your show, I, I, my radio stays on WBAP all day when I'm working. I work noon to midnight. And yours is the number one show I look forward to even listening to. It's the most common sense, rational of any of them. Well, I appreciate uh, that. My question is, and then and then I'll give you my statement and solution is, uh, if I understand right, they had videos or security in the school, and after all it was happened, they went back and reviewed this, and they had a timeline right to the minute and second that the the character got out of the Uber car when he stopped at the stairwell and made his rifle ready and so on and so forth, and it, exactly what time he entered this room and what time he entered that room. They knew after the fact what was going on. Am I correct? That's Yeah, that was the timeline I read on Friday. You bet. Okay. My solution is, and our schools in Bridgeport and Chico do have – movie theater type doors, uh, unless they unlock one door for a special event to let you in, uh, someone has to let you in. Uh, they, they only open from the inside. Right. Uh, but the Florida deal is they should have been more proactive than reactive. To me, the videos after the fact are reactive. Had they had someone monitoring those videos, before this all started, 24, well, whenever the schools are in business, and you can lock and unlock your house, your car, anything by your phone. You just push a button and you lock doors. Right. 
Had they been monitoring this, when the gentleman got out, and I'm using that loosely, <laughs> trying to be nice, yeah. but when he got out of the Uber car with this bag, if it was a rifle, it had to be more than just a lunch bag. It had to be a suspicious-looking bag. They knew who the guy was. They had dealt with him before. At that point, they could have locked the front doors down, hit an alarm, notified the teachers, and give them so many seconds, minutes, or whatever to get all the kids in a room, whether it be a closet, bathroom, or what, and lock the doors. In case he did shoot through the plate plate glass door and get in, that would be one delay, give them time to lock the kids down. But had they been watching this, rather than after the fact, they could have stopped this for whatever got started or at least slowed it down where there wouldn't have been that many people got hurt. Yep. Yeah, I, I you know, we look at this, and, of course, uh, you know, the left is m- manipulating the, the situation, and it's all about gun oh, yeah. control and what kind of guns and this and that and the other. It really, uh, I, I think the biggest change is very simple. You just simply change the ingress and egress uh, uh, to the school. I mean, obviously, you exactly. have a front... You have a front door, uh, police officers there. Every other door um, is set to, to where kids can get out in case of fire, but nobody can get in. We do it at theaters. I would imagine it would work at schools. And that's the way our gyms are set up. You have to come through the office. Now, I don't. we have a officer. I'm not sure about Chico, but I know we have an officer in the Bridgeport High School all the time, even in special events. Right. But you can only go through the front door. You cannot get in a side door without some special arrangement. No, uh, it, it, but, it but makes. Have they been? Yeah. Go, go ahead. ahead. It, it makes perfect sense. I mean, you know, I it may not be uh, it may not be uh, grandiose enough for a lot of people, but just changing the way that you get in and get out of a building can make all the difference. Yeah, control people from coming in, and like I said, hey, they've been watching that monitor. Rather than after the fact, they could have stopped that before we ever got to the front door. Yep, yep, I agree with you. But uh, and and I know I'm beating a dead horse to death, but I am a Christian, and I fully believe that when our kids started going bad, and what happened to the kids is when they took God, corporal punishment, and patriotism out of the school, this is what we're getting in a result. No, I, I totally agree. And, Once you take God out of anything, you create a vacuum that's usually filled with something that you're not going to like very well. Yeah, and and I say that, and I would say 80%, 90% of the kids in school are fantastic kids. They're doing what they, they're supposed to be doing. They're behaving, but it, it falls in the same category. I've drove a truck for nearly 50 years, wow. and I have heard so much garbage about truck drivers this, truck drivers that, <laughs> and the media jumps on the small percentage that's messing things up, and then we're all put in one category. Well, so I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to hammer you about that. I, you know, Dallas, uh, Dallas. I, I, I worked uh, out of uh, San Diego for KFMB yeah. for 17 years. I flew back and forth yeah. every 10, 12 days, so I didn't have to live there. But um, I thought those were the worst drivers I'd ever seen. Six, seven lanes <laughs> in each direction. They got nothing on Dallas. Uh, I mean, you know, in, in San Diego, a cloud comes up in the sky, and they just start running into each other because they're not used to oh, yeah. weather. Well, it's I, always... I fight the same thing every day. Yeah, but Dallas, Texas, but my point is, it's yeah, but totally my point worse. Is, don't, yeah, but don't categorize what I guess what I'm trying to say with that is I've seen it happen with with. I'm sure any business, but I, I notice truck driver more than anything. We take a small percentage, and they focus on that, and then we're all bad. We're not out here. Most of us just honest, hardworking guys trying to make a living. Yeah, and you can you can focus. tell if you can tell if you're if you're riding alongside somebody that needs some sleep or yeah. not. But don't don't focus on the one or two percent of these idiots that shooting up schools are bad kids and say, well, this is what our kids have turned out to be. Cause we've got a great bunch of kids. Oh, I, but I, we do need I to change the morals. We do need to change the morals in the United States. It is really, I am, I am appalled at how it's went downhill. I agree with you, Jim. And like I said before, you know, the real cure for all of this is, uh, you know, reinstilling the value of human life into the minds and hearts of, of kids. And uh, we've taken that away um, with 
movies, video games, abortion on demand, uh, you know, uber liberal mentality. Uh, and it's not going to change back overnight. You know, it took us a long time to destroy that. And I, uh, you know, I may not even see it in my lifetime. Uh, 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. Is it time? Is it time to get back into class? Stop this uber liberal. Uh, we're going to come get your guns to make everybody so safe mentality. Do you hear the red Chinese even wrote an article to us about how to, how to be, uh, you know, safer with guns? Uh, good Lord. Are you kidding me? Yeah. All right. Uh, 255 the time. Your call straight ahead. This is the news and talk of Texas. Now it's the Rick Roberts show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. After the hour, glad you're along. One eight hundred two eight eight WBAP. Man, if if you ever want to sit down and just laugh yourself out of your chair, uh, I should invite you to read my email. I mean, from the ridiculous to the sublime. Rick, door locks won't work. They'll just, uh, they'll be snipers outside. Let's just get rid of government. I mean, good Lord. It just goes from bad to worse. You know, I, I go through them, uh, some depending on who sends them, I ignore. But um, it's it's just, I guess that's what makes opinion, right? You know, I, for one, I'm ready to send a prayer up for those kids. Hey, have you noticed those signs? Prayers and thoughts don't work. Well, I'm not exactly sure what's meant by the authors of those signs, but I'm willing to send a, a prayer up for those kids and those families that uh, survived. I can only imagine. I'm ready to make some uh, some changes and move on. Kids, you've been heard. You've been manipulated by the liberal left. Um, it's time to stop that, too. Uh, kids should be allowed to be kids. And the the uber left uh, will exploit them every chance they get. Every chance they... Uh, do you think you could cry just a little bit? Yeah, or just tear up a little bit. Can, you, uh, can I get a close-up of that? Yeah, all right. Uh, we're not stupid. We know what's going on. We know what's going on. All right. Let me, uh, let me, I've already given you my idea. I don't think anything past that's going to happen or should happen. Uh, Brandon in Dallas. Brandon, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Brandon? Good, sir. How are you? I'm well. Thank you. Hey, real quick. Were you a defense or a prosecuting attorney? Uh, I've never practiced criminal law. I was a contract attorney. Okay. Then this won't sting. I think, that the, <laughs> <laughs> I think the problem We'll never stop. We're going to have the issues. You can't stop it all. You can ban whatever you want to ban. But the problem lies in the judicial system as far as the courts and the prosecuting, the DA's office. If you want to protest, protest, go there, because they're the ones that are letting these guys out on probation when the, when the law they broke calls for 2 to 10 years or, or 2 to 20 years, right. and instead they're getting probation. Go protest there. Get your district attorney online with, hey, we're no longer going to offer probation because they look good when they're in court and they're in a suit. But when you release them, they go back to doing the same crap. That's where you get it. You know, you arrest all the criminals. We've arrested them all. The courts let them back out. So you want to do that. And then you want to go to your mental health facilities. When somebody says they want to do something like this, well, they didn't mean it. We'll evaluate them for 10, 12, 24 hours, let them go back home. No. You say it, then, hey, you're here 90 days. That's it. We're not letting you out whether you were kidding or not. We're not going to take that chance. Start making these people have the correct punishment for what they said or what they did They were, or said they were going to do, and you're going to see a, a drastic reduction in this type of stuff. Never going to end. You're always going to have it, so wake up, America. Yeah, well, you can't stop it. It, 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 can, it can be reduced. I, I know myself and uh, Bonnie DeManis, the DA in San Diego, 
Uh, we did a, a thing about uh, they were releasing uh, sex offenders back into the community. And it, it was like, uh, well, they went through the program in prison and they, they haven't molested. Well, how many five-year-olds are running around a prison? That doesn't make any difference. Uh, and it's, it's what they do once they get out of prison. Um, and you know, if you make somebody hold somebody accountable, well, you know, those kids were just joking. They thought it was funny. They were just being kids. Uh, you hold them to, to some uh, accountability. If somebody says they're going to do something, whether it was a joke or not, you hold them for 90 days, put them through a battery of test. Who knows what you'll find? Yeah, that's the problem. Accountability is the word you hit the nail on the head. Accountability. We have lost. People aren't held accountable for their actions. No, know, they're not. And that's, that's what's causing a lot of it. And that goes for parents. You're not held accountable for how you're raising your kid. And you know, I'm not saying it's always the parents' problem, but a lot of it can be stemmed back to that early age, what they did with their kids. Accountability, if we'll put that back in there, if you all want to protest from the high schools, go to your DA's office, your court buildings. We have the laws. Where we don't have room is a law book. Yeah, we don't no. have any more room for laws to be written into the law book. You go there, make them implement the laws, make the punishments fit what the law says they can do. Two to ten years, you get at least two years, not probation. No, I listen. Um, I, I agree with you a hundred percent. You know, I mean, you know, we have we have ways to demonstrate proficiency for just about everything. I mean, you have to demonstrate proficiency to drive a car. You got to read a book, pass a test, then go out and drive and show somebody, you know, what you're doing. Same thing with being a pilot, even a private pilot. Um, if you're, uh, you know, if you're a doctor, an attorney, um, even, even, uh, skilled construction, you have to demonstrate some proficiency before you're allowed to do something. You know, when it comes to having kids, People can spit kids out like a Pez dispenser um, when they can't even take care of themselves. So, no, I, I'm not ready to let the, the parents off the hook. No, I, I mean, I, people should be operating to a point of accountability because your problem should not end up being my problem or my kids. Um, you're right, Brandon. Good call. I appreciate it. Rachel in Grand Prairie. Rachel, thanks for waiting. Hi. Yes, hi, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to make a couple of comments. I have uh, two daughters, 35 and 38, that both attended Shepton High School. Um, uh, just the school itself um, is not um, looking after their students very well. Uh, my daughter, uh, I got a call one day, and teachers were all upset. They told me that she was, my daughter was mad and got up on the desk and complained about the pro, the way the teacher assigned something and she didn't get on the team she wanted and out she walked and half the students in the class walked out with her. Okay. I, she was held accountable with me when she got home, but the school did nothing. And all oh, those wait, wait, wait a second. You said your daughter was in her thirties. How long ago was this? Oh, this was, she was, my daughter, my youngest one's 34 and the other one's 38, and they both attended Shepton High School in Plano. So the, the, the chances of the school being run exactly the same are probably oh, not very know. likely. I, I don't know. If you know Plano, they're a bit of elitist over there, just like Highland Park. They, you know, their students are so perfect that, you know, these kids are raised with two parents doing nothing but majority of them are just concerned about money and you know my life and you know me and uh, but and that and I I don't think it's changed too much but I do want to say that nothing was those kids were never held responsible and not only that but one of them uh, they were starting drug dealers were coming way back in the day 15 years ago and started passing out drugs and they actually put in cameras in the school to catch these drug dealers I was one of two parents that was up there daily furious from my straight A student going to an F student like and and social behavior and everything off the wall and I was up there daily and it got to where they saw me coming and they locked me out. Locked me out fifteen, seventeen years ago. So they can lock out a mother who cares about her child getting on drugs and passing out in the classroom from her desk. I think they should be able to, you know, stop somebody that's psycho with a gun. Well, look, there's always more to a story than, you know, what I hear in a, a brief um, two or three minutes on the phone. 
Um, but I will say this, I, you know, I've said it before, um, and it's no, I'm not knocking the teachers. Uh, if, if my kids were of school age and they're not now, but if they were, I would, there is no way I'd put them in public schools. No way. No way. They'd go to a private school, parochial school, charter school, uh, homeschool, something, even if I had to take a second job. Um, but there's no way I'd put my kids in public school. But that's a whole different issue. A whole different issue. 313 the time. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk, 820 WBAP. All right, uh, 318 the time. Back to your calls in just a second. You know, I um, I don't think there's much more room for dialogue here. I, I truly don't. We don't need to be talking about gun control. We need to be talking about school safety, how you make schools safer. That's what we, I mean, you do that for politicians. You do that uh, uh, for law enforcement. Uh, you do that for politicians, for crying out loud. You know, you know get off the gun control kick for, I, mean, I know it's tough because the uber liberal press is beating that drum viciously. But if you get off the gun control kick for a little while and start talking about how you make schools safer, hardening up uh, the target, you may actually accomplish something. Uh, Let's go to Rick in North Richland Hills. Rick, thanks for waiting. Hi. How are you doing, Rick? Doing well. Well, good. I'm finding a frog hair split full ways myself. Okay, I can barely hear you, Rick. I said I'm I'm finer than a frog hair split four ways. I don't have any uh, Bluetooth on or any... Uh, all right. Sounds good. On. Can yeah. you hear me all right? Yeah. All right. Here's my thoughts. And I go more to what brought the incident around. Why did the individual feel it necessary to go in and shoot a bunch of people. And I thought about myself. I go back to my high school years. And I, and I, I myself have been bullied, have been talked down to, because I wasn't in the clique. I wasn't uh, anybody, according to my high school people, according to the people I was going to high school with. And I felt very isolated. Now, I didn't, of course, go out and get a gun and start shooting a bunch of people. But when you got someone that has got mental health issues and you start putting them down in that respect and they're not getting any help whatsoever, any help, they're going to react and they're going to react with everything they got, vengeance and all, because they don't know any other way. There's no other way to strike back. Well, Rick, Rick that let, me, let me ask you this. Uh, as long as there have been kids, there have been bullies. There were bullies in, in when you were a kid, when I was a kid. The difference is uh, we either ended up in a fist fight or we ended up uh, not associating with each other. We didn't end up, you know, going home, getting a firearm and killing people. So why, why the difference? Well, I don't disagree with you. And one thing my father taught me when I was a kid, he said, don't start a fight. But be the one that finishes it. Yeah, but the question still remains, what has changed in society where, um, you know, like I said, there'd be a fist fight after school or, you know, you simply didn't associate with those people any longer. Um, no one ever got shot. Uh, at school. So why the different? Why is that different? That's different because today in today's society, we have got a breakdown in the family. We have a lot of fathers missing, be it white, black, or whatever. We've got a lot of fathers missing. They're only being brought up by the mothers, and the mothers don't know everything that a boy goes through or that a man goes through or anything like that. Well, you know, so, I would I would say this. I played football in high school with a kid that you probably know. Um, he went on to have a pretty good football career. His name was Steve Largent. Um, 
you know, he he was in that situation. He didn't end up uh, shooting a bunch of people. As a matter of fact, he's one of the finest human beings I think I've ever met. But uh, at the end of the day, it's it's no value on human life. When you look at movies, when you look at the video games, and I'm not talking about Pac-Man or Space Invaders. I'm talking about uh, very, very graphic videos uh, where you can pick up a hooker on the side of the street, be pleasured as you're driving, and shoot three or four people. Um, those kind of video games, yes, they do exist. Uh, you know, between video games and movies and abortion on demand, there's no value for human life. So taking it doesn't have the same impact as it did back in, you know, back in the day. You know, like I said, everybody's been bullied. I was a, I was a small kid. I mean, I'm over six foot now and a couple hundred pounds, but you know, it took me a while to get there. I was bullied incessantly, um, but I never, you know, I had lots of fights, but I never thought about going to get a knife or a gun that, I mean, that never even entered my mind. The difference is society, Rick. The difference is there's no value on human life. It's expendable. And you see that every single day in the society in which we live. Uh, Rick, I appreciate the call very much. 24 minutes after the hour, 324 the time, 1-800-288-WBAP. And the kids have had their protest. The kids have walked out. They've done what they needed to do. Now it's time to what? Put security in schools, limit uh, the access to the buildings, just like we do for everybody else, and uh, move on. You know, you're not going to change human behavior. You're not going to reinstill the value of human life by doing gun control. Let's get off the gun control kick long enough to start uh, talking about school safety. Because, really, that's what this is. Uh, 332 the time i'm rick roberts glad you're along 1-800-288-wbap 1-800-288-9227 well the kids at uh shepton high school in plano walked out we did a uh, on the scene report from clayton neville who was out there uh, it looks like they had their protest and went back in so everything's fine I think the time for the protest and the signs and the lie-in pretending to be dead, I think that's, I think we're done, aren't we? Well, I think we should be. Time to get back to school. Uh, it's not as though we do a stellar job of educating in the first place. And uh, the adults in the room now need to take the lead, uh, push the... Uh, the liberal agenda to the side. Stop talking about gun control. Start talking about school safety. And, and that's really what we're talking about. Make the schools as uh, as difficult to get into as uh, the Capitol or police stations or any place else. I mean, that's really what we need to be talking about. The kids have been pushed into this gun control, gun control, gun control. Well, it's about school safety that's what it's about um let's uh let's go to jeff jeff in dallas jeff thanks for waiting how you doing jeff very good rick how are you good thanks uh i just i just wanted to comment for for one with kids i'm i'm 41 years old i have uh three sons uh ages from 8 14 and 16 and uh in my opinion I believe a lot of problems with a lot of kids are us as parents, I mean, me included. And the re reason I say that is because we live, in my opinion, we live in a fast-paced society from when I grew up. And, and us as parents, uh, most parents, you know, if they're having issues with their kids, they want quick results. So... With those quick results, you go to the doctor, uh, 
and this was with my 16-year-old when he was around, let's say, 11 to 12, uh, they start they put, they labeled him as ADHD. Well, they put him on ADHD medication, and with with that, <clears throat> we're wanting them to you know we're wanting them to fall in line. So during this time, he was they kept putting him on different medications. At one point, he was on five different medications. That's insane. Which which during this time. He tried to burn down his room, and this was when he was 12 years old. Uh, what we did, we finally figured it out, stopped trying to be fast-paced, started talking to him, took him. Finally, I said, that's enough. We took him off all his medications because the medication was making him like a zombie. He was you know, acting out. He wasn't there. He was not thinking clearly and with that he is now a, a b sometimes a student he is a uh he's a sophomore in high school he's doing good it's not just us talking to him that helped it was the counseling that we brought him to as well and all that takes time and a lot of us as parents we say we don't have the time and i don't know and that that's just my opinion. It, it, when they're on all these medications, I've seen my son. I've seen some of my friends' kids as well. It's it affects it affects how they go through everyday life. How how they process you know information in their head. Or how you were talking about video games. How they they played these violent video games. I agree with you on that, especially when you said the one where they could pick up the hookers. I, I, they brought that game into the house, and I had them get rid of the game once I finally heard what was going on on the game. Right. But me being as 41, I was in the, the upcoming of the PlayStation, of the games, where they had good graphics, where they were violent games that I played, and me, me and a lot of my friends did as well, but none of us wanted to go out and shoot up everybody because we had that mental capability. And with a lot of these kids that I've I've heard, you know, that have done this, a lot of them have been on a lot of medications like my son was. So. Well, I, I think that that is, you know, there's no one single thing you can put your finger on and say, okay, this is why society has degraded itself to the point where kids don't think twice about killing other kids. I mean, once you devalue human life uh, and you right. do it, you do it through a culture and, you know, just like video games, I'm not talking space invaders or centipede or Pac-Man or any of that. I'm talking about things that desensitize you uh, to the value of human life and movies and music. And I mean, every, just in social media, uh, it's uh, you know, like somebody said, you know, if you were bullied in school back in the day, you at least got a break overnight. With social media, it's 24-7. Um, yes, it's constant. Uh, yeah. Yes, I agree with that. So, I mean, w nobody has any one specific answer that's going to cure everything. Um, you know, it took no, us a long no, time no. to get to this point. Yeah, and, and I agree. And in a way, I, I understand what you're coming from when you say it, it desensitizes them. Yeah, in a way, I believe it it does. But I still think us as parents, you know, should instill in them the difference between right and wrong. And uh, as far as, you know, taking a life and, and not, and... Well, I mean, if you if you've a lot, got a, a lot kid, of that medication desensitizes exactly. Well, to my son. If if you've got a kid uh, that has got some issues to begin with, and then you pile all this cultural stuff on top of it, uh, yeah, I'm I'm surprised we don't have more school shootings than we do. So you know, gun control isn't going to take care of that kid's uh, mental uh, condition. You know, gun control is not going to take care of a societal shift. Gun control is not going to do anything to address any of those issues. School safety will. At least you can keep 
the guy outside. And and really, that's what we're talking about. Are our kids over-medicated? Of course they are. Um, there's no, there's no, we've, we've talked about that so many times. It's redundant even to bring it up, um, over medicated kids that has, that have an issue or two. And then you pile on all this cultural stuff that desensitizes, um, the value of human life. Of course, it's going to be a problem, you know? So what are the adults in the room doing? They're talking about gun control because they politicize everything. Everything is politicized. And in in this particular case, it's not about politics. It's not about the left or the right. Uh, it's about how do you keep kids from getting shot? Well, you keep the bad guy outside. Uh, you know, it's to me, I, I, I'm sick of the vicious circle of dialogue. You know, the left, they want your guns, so it's all about guns. Uh, the right, they want to get it fixed uh, with one fail swoop and a piece of legislation. Um, both of them fail to recognize that we've allowed this culture to degrade to the point where we don't value human life anymore. That's the problem. Now, there is no quick fix for that. So the best you can do is try to make the, the school safer. That's what you do. 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. I realize the governor of Florida is obliged to do something. It happened in his state. But I think overall, nationally, we need, we need to admit to ourselves we've done a horrible job with society. We've done a horrible job raising kids. And then we've raised them into a, into a society that is just basically baseless when it comes to the value of human life. Nobody wants to admit that because everyone's to blame. I'm Rick Roberts. Your call straight ahead. You know, in the old days, we had mental institutions. In a lot of, and you could nab somebody like this because, you know, they did. They knew he was, something was off. You had to know that. People were calling all over the place. But you used to be able to bring him into a mental institution and hopefully he gets help or whatever. But he's off the streets. How many times have I said that? You know, none of this stuff. Um, none of this stuff is new. Was this kid in need of help? Obviously so. But I mean, uh, my God, it's just, it's a vicious circle of dialogue. No beginning and no end. It just goes around and around and around. And the left, you know, they're trying to catch uh, kids all teary-eyed. Uh, it's all about guns. It, none of this is about guns. Did you know that? None of what happened in Florida is about guns. Guns played a part. They were the tool of choice of a kid that had a bunch of issues. If we want to take care of this, kid, keep kids safer, we're, we need to talk about school safety. Gun control is not going to stop this. Let's go to Chris in Keller. Chris, thanks for waiting. Hi, Chris. Hey, Rob. Thanks for taking my call. No, so, on the issue of gun debate, Columbine High School massacre occurred during Clinton's assault weapons ban. So, I mean, that obviously worked really well in preventing a school shooting. Well, I, I know you're being facetious. I mean, they had a sawed-off gun uh, rifle barrel on his dresser, had fuse cord. Uh, I don't know what he was going to do with that. Uh, I think that was Klebold. Um, I mean, he had p parents that just simply were blind to what was going on. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, no no law was going to change anything that happened there. Um, human interaction and human intervention was going to. And, you know, one of the other things, as the commercial just said, you know, President Trump was saying, we need to look at mental health institutions, access to mental health, sometimes forced, sometimes voluntary. Because when somebody is, you know, crazy, we as a society need to deal with that. 
you know, we deal with people that break laws, but we won't deal with people that aren't capable of handling themselves. Well, the so, liberal, the liberals, the liberal mindset is, well, first of all, you would be chastised. Oh, we don't use the word crazy. Um, you know, they're just viewing uh, the world through a different filter than we. No, they're nuts. And they need to be put someplace so they don't hurt anybody. Yeah. And, and you know, something else, our laws are so backwards. Um, I'm remarried. My wife had a previous marriage, and so I've got stepkids. And in the divorce dec- uh, agreement between them, it's written that we're not allowed to take those kids to see any kind of a mental health professional or a counselor or anything unless his biological father approves. And he has across the board said no. He won't let him play sports. He won't let him go to see a therapist. And he's got some emotional issues that we've been trying to deal with. And we finally, this past couple of months, were like, screw it. Screw the court order. Screw his dad. We're taking him to a therapist anyways. But, you know, you shouldn't be able to tell somebody they can't get help. We should be forcing help on people whether they want it or not. Well, I mean, you know, just like in that that soundbite of of Trump. Yes, we used to have mental institutions. We used to institutionalize people. And no, they weren't great places to be. Nobody wanted to be there and be medicated and have the guys in the little white coats. Um, But what do you do with the people that should be there? You know where they are? They're living under a bridge on I-35. I mean, we we've got to take care of things and the liberal mindset that, well, you can't do that with these people and that's not right. And what about their self-esteem? And, you know, he didn't get uh, potty trained properly. He didn't get a pony when he was five. A clown scared him at the circus. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on. But at some point, it's going to manifest and we need to address it. This isn't about guns. This is about people. Absolutely. And, you know, maybe we didn't do a great job with our mental institutions in the past, but they did serve a purpose. And if we didn't do a good job of it, let's just do a better job of it. But that doesn't mean that the role and the need for it went away. Amen. Amen to that. I mean, um, you know, I, I will say something, and I don't normally do this on the air. I keep my private life private, but I'm going to say this. And I'm going to say this because it it needs to be said. Um, You know, I was raised, you know, I was raised by my grandparents. And from time to time, um, my mother would would try to raise us. Uh, When I say us, my stepsister. She was, uh, I don't know, she was two and I think I was seven or eight. And I remember walking in one time. Um, from school, I must have been in fifth grade, sixth grade, something like that. And I could hear my sister just screaming and crying. And of course she was two and a half, three years old, something like that. So I'm, I'm walking through the backyard out of the alley and I, the closer I got, the, you know, the louder her crying was. And of course, you know, I'm, I'm seven years old, seven or eight. I don't know what it was, but I walk in through the back sc- uh, screen door. My little sister, stepsister is, is sitting on the floor, just bawling her eyes out. And I walk in and my mother had slit both her wrist and was bleeding out on the front room floor. So I very calmly picked up my little sister, dialed my grandfather, and I still remember the number, Murray 29090, and told him what was going on, went out in the front porch and sat down on the step with my sister and waited for him to show up. Uh, she had mental issues her entire life, and thank God for my grandparents to, you know, give me a home. Um, you know, in this day and age, um, you know, she would have received no help. You know, she received help, and she went on to have a professional music career and, and did very well for herself, I, I, I'm told. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, you have to help people that need help, even if they don't want it. And that's where those institutions used to come into play. Uh, you know, if you don't care about people, then you do away with them. And we didn't care about it. It it made people feel better not to have those institutions where people were being held against their will. When, in fact, uh, all they do now is they give them a quick test, they cut them loose, they're back on the streets to harm themselves or someone else. So don't tell me 
don't tell me that we've made a, this is a more progressive society. Um, we've regressed. We haven't progressed. There are people that need help, just like this kid probably needed help. Um, the guardians uh, weren't able to do it. You show up uh, as a police officer 39 times to the same address in a five-year period. I'm guessing something's wrong. And it's a crying shame that nobody could have seen that enough to choose to take action. And you know what? If they did, they would have probably been shouted down by some liberal someplace. Well, he's just a little different. He views the world through a different filter than the rest of us. You know, all of the the liberal mentality, which doesn't do anything for anyone, uh, but say, no, you're not accountable. Uh, No, there is no consequence for action. Uh, You know, as long as you feel okay doing whatever you're doing, then you keep doing it. Uh, We have caused the school shootings that we have seen in the last couple of decades. Why? Because we have come to a point in society where human life no longer has value and anybody can do anything at any time under any circumstance. That's not that's not a that's not a free country. That's a country in bondage. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the News and Talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WVAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, four minutes after the hour. By the way, if any of the uh, high school students at Shepton High School uh, happen to be uh, near a radio, happen to be listening to this broadcast, feel free to call in. I'm not here to beat you up, uh, but I am here to say it's time probably to get back to uh, educating our young people. I don't know that uh, 15-year-olds necessarily need to be organizing any more protests or, or things of that kind. It's time for the adults to be adults. Stop manipulating and using our young people. Uh, stop, uh, you know, trying to... Uh, this this liberal mentality, it's about guns. It's about the kind of guns. It's about the color of the guns. It's about... Uh, okay, shut up. You know, as well as everybody else, it's not anything to do with guns. It's about keeping schools safe. Whether it's a a sex offender or some nut job that wants to shoot up the school, it's about keeping the schools safe. That's what it's about. So let's start doing that and stop talking about everything else politically that we have an agenda with and make the schools safer. Uh, Let's go to Larry in Dallas. Larry, hi. Yeah, Rick, thanks for taking my call. I'm 72 years old, and I call it over 50 years of liberal indoctrination. Sums the whole conversation that we've been having this afternoon. But what compelled me to call was I did early voting today. And the turnout was unbelievable. And when I walked out, got in my car, started driving out of the parking lot, and I saw my state representative, which I shall keep nameless. And I've never seen her in the mood she was in and she said Larry the Democrats are coming out in groves they want this state to be a socialistic state and Rick what's happening you know we're a crossover state you don't have to register one way or the other you can go in and ask right for the Republican ballot or the Democratic ballot and what's happening I believe is that the high Democrats coming through the polls they have their instructions of what liberal on the Republican ballot to vote for or what ba- what what candidate on the Republican ballot Republican ballot to vote for that can be defeated? And I'm not saying I've, I didn't vote for every incumbent today, but I'm just pleading on your radio show for the conservatives that are listening to your show to more than just talk to go and ask a few questions and then go to the polls and vote. We cannot let the Democrats overpower us by them overvoting. And that's what I'm pleading with your listeners, and I certainly appreciate it is well worth the wait to be able to express what my 
state representative expressed to me. And thank you so much for taking my call. Larry, any time. I agree with him uh, 100%. You know, socialism, you, you, you realize we're a, we're a whisper away from socialism, right? Socialism, uh, for those young people that are listening, it's an economic system where everyone in society, everybody, equally owns the factors of production. Ownerships usually through a an elected government. It could also be a cooperative, a public corporation where everybody owns shares. Uh, the four factors of production are labor, entrepreneurship, capital goods, and natural resources. And socialism has a mantra from each according to their ability to each according to his contribution. Now, everyone in society receives a share of the production based on how much they've contributed. You know, that motivates them to work long, long hours if they want to receive more. And it sounds pretty good when you're 16, 17, 18 years old. Until you start working for a living, and then you realize socialism assumes that the basic nature of people is cooperative. That nature hasn't yet emerged in full because capitalism has forced people to be competitive. Therefore, a basic tenet of socialism is that the economic system must support this basic human nature. Trust me, you don't want to live in socialism. It's, uh, as I always put it, it's the rest stop on the highway to communism. Uh, let's go to Stan in Fort Worth. Stan, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Stan? Oh, I'm doing fine. <clears throat> I listen to you every day, Rick. And uh, I agree with you sometimes, sometimes I don't. But <laughs> if I understand where you're coming from. Uh, the What I wanted to say was I, I've taught school <clears throat> in the public school, junior college, college, private schools. And finally, I just said, due to liberalism, I just said, hey, I'm out of here. I can't teach with uh, my fellow teachers because they just can't understand what's going on i think it's uh probably our fault because we allow these school boards and superintendents to hire liberals and they've kind of inched out the conservative teachers in the school system for instance when i was a kid uh if you had a bully and he was after you you usually got enough of it and it turned into doubling up your fist correcting the problem and uh, after that, you were either best friends or at least you had his respect. And I think that that's gone in the way of this, uh, I don't know, mental condition called liberalism and allowing them to get entrenched within our education system. No, yeah, uh, it's it's been there for it's been there forever, and every year it becomes increasingly, increasingly liberal because of the federal government. To tell you uh, how long it's been since I taught was in, uh, I think the last year was like 76. Right. And uh, I can't believe the changes, but like I said, I think it's uh, uh, a mental disease. I think that's liberalism. Uh, did you ever, at the time you were teaching, have to deal with uh, a uh, superintendent uh, that told you, um, listen, Stan, if Johnny gets up feeling especially pretty and identifies as a girl, you've got to let him use the girl's bathroom? Uh, that was never, that wouldn't have happened when I thought. No. Well, it shouldn't be happening now. Uh, but this is what happens when liberalism runs amok. I mean, I turned on television last night, and if you're homosexual, this is not a dig on you, I couldn't find a show that wasn't homosexual. That, that Big Brother thing, I got stuck on that for a minute, and the guy, I don't know, he's a I don't know what he is, but he's obviously over-the-top flamboyant gay. And then there was another one where the two guys, I don't know. I mean, everything I turned on was gay. I'm not gay. I don't get that kind of humor. Okay? Sorry. 
I'm not saying, hey, there's there's a guy, go get him. He's yeah, he's, yeah, he's that's a queer over there. Get him. No, that's not me. I don't care who you're sleeping with any more than you care who I'm sleeping with. But I I don't get. I mean, the television shows are just. It's a wasteland, truly. It, all right, all right, I, I got to shut up. 12 minutes after the hour, 4.12 the time, your call's next. All right, uh, 17 minutes after the hour, 4.17 the time. Let's go to David. David, thanks for waiting. How you doing, David? Hey, Rick, how are you, sir? I'm well, thank you. Hey, I wanted to let you know, uh, from time to time, you remind me of the great Paul Harvey, your master of the pause. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, I used to listen to Paul Harvey. Um, I didn't get my grandfather to drive me to school too often, but when it was snow, uh, you know, up past your knees, uh, he'd drive me to school, and he always had Paul Harvey on, always. Well, I would, I'd like you to know that sometimes I hear the, the silence on the radio, and, and that's what it reminds me of. It gives the uh, listener time to think and, and digest, and so thank you for that. Um, second of all, I, I'd like to weigh in uh, on the protection of the children in our schools sure. and what you think about the value of a canine with an officer. You know, we had a, a deputy that uh, evidently froze in uh, – in, in the line of fire being fired, well, the children are being fired on, but I've been to Afghanistan two times, and um, sometimes uh, fear would overtake a man where the, uh, a, a canine would uh, be fearless. What do you think about canines in the school? Uh, well, I've, I've got a special, uh, special love for canines uh, when I was uh... – a college student, I worked with a uh, local police department uh, in training dogs. Uh, that's before they sent them off to, uh, well, in my state, they used to send them to Tulsa. My son-in-law, my daughter's husband, is a canine officer. Um, and, of course, they don't use shepherds anymore. They use the Belgian Malmois. But, uh, you know, we've always had dogs in my house, most of them uh, German shepherds. And, um, uh, you know, I, I think it's a good idea. I, I think it would be... Um, an immediate connection with students and an officer. Uh, those dogs aren't cheap, though, and the training is not cheap either. So, you know, that might might be prohibitive for, for some schools. Right. Well, I, I understand that. Uh, I, I would like to say, though, that, you know, uh, being in Afghanistan twice, that you can put your trust in that dog. And I've heard you talk about your dog and that um, – they're they're absolutely fearless, but um, I think um, the, the, you know with the incident that just happened, we had a deputy that, that froze, and um, that uh, you know I I've been fired on, and, and that uh, I I can tell you that uh, I believe that those uh, canine units, uh, you know, with with the police escort would would be beneficial to the schools. And uh, I just wanted to put my two cents in. No, I, I think you, I think you're right. You know, obviously some schools are going to have more money than others. Uh, the rural schools generally uh, don't have a lot of money, so something else would probably have to be worked out. But at least we're talking about the right thing. We're talking about school safety. We're talking about uh, how to make it more difficult for any Joe Blow to walk off the street and walk into a school. You can't do that in a police station. I mean, you can, but there are certain areas you can't get to. Can't do that with politicians. Uh, you can't even do that in some hospitals, uh, some areas of the hospital. It seems like a no-brainer that we do. We talk about school safety and make them harder targets. Um, but you got to get the liberals uh, off the gun uh, control nut talk first. Um, and once you get them off the gun control issue, you can deal with the real issue, which is making it tougher just to walk in off the street into a school. Uh, good call. I appreciate it. Neil. Neil in Colleyville. Neil, thanks for waiting. Hi. Oh, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Um, I've got an idea on, on uh, school safety that I haven't heard anybody talk about, but it seems like it'd be an easy one, which is to have somebody dedicated at the school to monitoring uh, social media sites of all the kids that are in the school. They'd have a lot of, of potential 
possibility to catch kids before they go off the deep end, and maybe you can uh, talk to them and, and be proactive with them. And also, you might even find other things like kids that are contemplating suicide or kids that are, uh, you know, doing all kinds of things. Or, or you might even find out about things that are going wrong at home that. Uh, then the counselors could actually become proactive and start to uh, actually uh, look for the kids that are potentially going to be a problem. Uh, and it'd be real easy to set up somebody that is just uh, a single individual that would be monitoring those sites all day long uh, and looking for, for potential problems. Uh, I don't think it's a bad idea. I don't really know how you'd put, put it into practice, but... I don't think it's a bad idea. You know, social media has become as important for school students now as the school itself. Maybe in some cases even more important. Um, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Again, it all comes down to funding and where you need to put the money. Um, I would, I would hope that, uh, you know, teachers, uh, that are contacted on social media by students would, you know, take a look, monitor it and that type of thing. Uh, but I think you're talking about something more formal uh, as far as somebody that is tasked with doing nothing but uh, monitoring social media. You know, something we've seen here in Texas, and it's happening all over the country, um, kids, for whatever reason, thinking it's funny, uh, joking, uh, trying to get attention, uh, whatever it is, they're making these threats left and right leaving the threats uh, written on the wall in the bathroom, uh, doing it through social media. And I think what needs to happen is every single one of these threats needs to be investigated. And if a kid, well, I was just kidding. Okay, well, um, you get 90 days in a juvenile detention center, and we're not kidding. Uh, they need to real, but see, that's what happens when there's no consequence for action. There needs to be consequence for action. There needs to be responsibility for the actions you take as a kid. We can't, if we catch it, we're not going to say, oh, well, it's just a kid. Well, that just a kid's going to end up being uh, probably uh, pretty screwed up just an adult. So make them responsible. Uh, 424 at the time. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk 820 WBAP. I had lunch with Wayne LaPierre, Chris Cox, and David Lehman of the NRA. And I want to tell you, they want to do something. And I said, fellas, we got to do something. It's too long now. We got to do something. All right. What what do we, what do we get? What do we have to do? Outlaw certain kinds of guns. (laughs) Um, We need to be talking about school safety. Get the liberal media out of the faces of these kids and they'll probably say the same thing. Yeah, it's it's about school safety. All right? Um, and to the credit of Mayor Rawlings, who I don't agree with often at all, and Mayor Pro Tem Carraway, they've agreed to meet me at uh, Eagle Gun Range, put their hands on, even fire if they choose to do so. Um, you know, an AR, for whatever reason, AR-15s have now become the targets. If we just got rid of ar 15 you know that's not true. So do I. And probably anybody that can add two and two and more often than not come up with four knows that, that that's not the issue. The issue is school safety. What can we do to make school safer? Put law enforcement in. A couple of you said, uh, you know, bring... Uh, uh, bringing a canine unit, you know, canine units. I, I don't know if you're aware, but those dogs are extremely expensive. Uh, expensive. Number one, the training is probably even more expensive. Uh, there, it's a huge investment for a police department. Um, so I don't know about the canine end of it. That'd be great. A lot of schools don't have a lot of money, but there's always something we can do to make the school safer, right? Uh, Kevin in Hunt County. Kevin, thank you for waiting. How you doing? I'm doing great, Mr. Roberts. Every, everyday listener. Thank you Love very much. Thank you. Um, I believe there's several issues that's that's uh, uh, not being mentioned. If you look at what all these little shooters have had in common, uh, they're all on Rivlin, Prozac, Xanax, 
uh, if there's any type of little issue, take a pill, take a pill. And and I believe that, that it's just covering up the symptoms. They're high on their pills all the time, if that's the case. They get off the pills and they go berserk because they can't handle the pressure. Um, they're not taught how to handle pressure is one of the issues. Um, <clears throat> I think the larger issue is social media. And who's to say that kids should even have social media devices at school? You know, back back when we were school, people would pass notes, and that's how things got spread around. Now right. it's instantaneous, texting, constantly texting, uh, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, all that kind of garbage. And I believe that right there is a huge part of the problem. And I was going to mention one more thing to you, sir. When it comes to canines, it's not that the canines are so expensive. My wife and I have trained canines for numerous years, uh, German Shepherd, CEO, and it's the problem is that dogs are so few and far between to get the level of skill that we're looking for, and that's why them dogs are so expensive. Uh, uh, yeah, just, I mean. They're not abundant. You're right. Uh, I don't know what the, what the thinking be. I've never asked my son-in-law. He's a canine officer. I've never asked him why they switched from shepherds to Belgian uh, Malmois. But, I mean, you know, the dog with no training at all can cost upwards of four grand. And then if Correct. if you uh, if you, the training itself can be uh, anywhere up to and over ten thousand dollars, so you know that doesn't seem feasible for a smaller school with very limited funds. Yes, sir, you're correct. You know, I, I can throw this at you. You asked about the Malin walls. The reason they're going with Malin walls is Malin walls are they're like uh, German shepherds on crack cocaine. Yep, <laughs> they're they are. Uh, uh, Shepherd, you can bring home from work, and Malin walls are always uh, working. Yeah, they so, uh, they've my my son in law has a take home car or take home vehicle. It's a it's a Tahoe, um, and I think they're on the third interior. Uh, <laughs> Correct. <yeah. laughs> because it, it's oh, boy. it's it's. I mean, the, the dog is just he's on twenty four seven, and of course. Uh, when yes, you're sir. an officer, you take the dog home. The city comes out and puts a, you know, pours a slab and builds a kennel. And of course, my daughter has a German Shepherd, and it's funny to see those two out there in the backyard by themselves, um, <laughs> because her German Shepherd uh, is a female, and you know, his dog male, um, and the female is dominant over everything. But man, you oh, put oh, yeah. you put that dog in a car, and he never met upholstery he didn't like. I mean, it's just. <laughs> Right. It's crazy. Yeah. I have friends that doesn't even have interiors over their dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's the truth. Kevin, thank you for the call. I appreciate it very much. Charlie in Sherman, Texas. Charlie, how you doing? Doing great, Rick. How are you? Doing well. I just wanted to make a comparison. Uh, when the Second Amendment in the old days, when the forefathers gave us permission to bear arms, it was to protect ourselves against, uh, you know, the government if we ever needed it. Right. Well, they didn't have, you know, the the permission they gave was weapons of equal strength and accuracy. So when the left makes the argument nowadays that uh, nobody needs an AR-15, uh, that's the the right that we're given. You know, I mean, if we ever had to protect ourselves, hopefully it'll never happen. But uh, you would need weapons that were equally accurate and strong. And I, I don't know why anybody with the Wayne LaPierre from the NRA hasn't made that comparison or brought up that right. But, uh, you know, it, it just seems like. Well, let me ask you, let me, to, let me ask you this, because the Second Amendment it talks about a well-regulated militia necessary to the uh, security of a free state. And then it says the right, R-I-G-H-T, of the people to keep and bear arms, you know, and of course it won't be infringed. Um, the operative clause is, of course, the clear, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. What part of that, um, what part of that, uh, that uh, Second Amendment are you speaking of? Well, just the, the, the outright, the right to, to, to bear arms. I mean, uh, I feel like that we should have the right. I mean, uh, an AR-15 is no different than somebody owning a Corvette as opposed to a Volkswagen. I mean, in reality, you and I know that. But that's the focal point of the left is the AR-15. 
And, you know, my only argument would be was, well, if we have the right to bear arms to protect ourselves, you know, against the, the government, uh, we should have weapons of equal strength. I mean, I know we can't have tanks and bazookas and things like that, but as far as, as uh, you know, long guns and pistols, I mean, I, I feel like that gives us the right to own any of the above. Yeah, see, with the school shootings, um, you know, the Second Amendment always comes up. Um, but there was a decision, a 5-4 majority of the Supreme Court ruled that the Second Amendment uh, gives an individual the right to keep and bear arms, obviously, and that uh, this happened to be D.C. Um, they wanted to ban handguns and require fire, uh, firearms in the home to be disassembled or locked uh, locked up someplace. Um, and the Supreme Court said that violates the right. And uh, this is not about guns, as far as I'm concerned. No. It's about how do you keep schools safe? We figured that out with police stations. We figured it out with, uh, um, you know, places where politicians uh, work, the Capitol building. Uh, we've figured out how to keep people out of certain areas of hospitals. Uh, we should be able to figure this out if we'd get out of the, you know, the, the, the incessant mantra of the left. Left, which is get rid of guns, get rid of guns. This isn't a gun issue. It's a how do right. you make the, the school buildings safer issue? Well, and they're they're not concerned about saving the lives of children. I don't feel like anyway because I, I googled up statistics for cell phone deaths, and it, let's make uh, cell phones illegal that kids can't have a cell phone till they're twenty one. Because according to the statistics I read, eleven teens die every day from texting and driving. Well, you do I, the math on that. Yeah. I mean, I, so. I, you know, that whole, by the way, I'm going to, I'm going to throw this out there. You know, you, you hear all the time on the left, uh, you know, 2.3 people per second die of this or 20 people a day die from that. Or, you know, guns kill, uh, you know, 121 people every week or, uh, pick up a book called damned lives and statistics. It's called damned lies and statistics. And it'll tell you exactly how the left uses numbers to make, uh, to make an agenda, to make a narrative. Um, it's pretty interesting and it's eye opening as well. Again, it's, um, tell you what, David, would you do that for me? Look up damned lies and statistics, who the author is. It's a, it's a phenomenal read. And for whatever reason, I can't ever remember the author's name. I'll give it to you when we come back. 442 the time. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, uh, 447 the time. Glad you're along. 1-800-288-WBAP. Let me, if I may, give you exa an example of why so many people are confused. All right? Once you hear this, you won't be. A lot of other people will still be confused. Now, Newsmax is a, is a pretty good outfit. I like them a lot. I do Newsmax TV from time to time. Um, and uh, Steve Michaels is with Newsmax, and a pretty good writer. But even he got it wrong. He he did a piece, a report, Democratic congressmen introduce an assault weapons ban. Two Democratic lawmakers formally introduced another assault weapons ban in the House uh, today. But the bill from, um, I don't know who the two guys are, Cicilline and Deutsch, I think, um, this is probably going to face uh, strong opposition, blah, 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 blah. It's called the Assault Weapons Ban of 2018. Put put on the table less than two weeks after, uh, you know, the slaughter of those high school kids. Um, now, here's what he wrote, the last paragraph. Police say crews used in the AR-15 assault rifle, one of the many automatic firearms that would be banned under the bill. Okay, the AR-15 that you and I can go by is not an automatic firearm. An automatic version of the AR-15 is built for military purposes. When you pull the trigger and hold the trigger, it keeps firing. That's not what you and I can walk into a gun shop and buy. We can go buy a semi-automatic, which means every time you pull the trigger, it fires a round. And it's only one of, what, 150 semi-automatic weapons that are made? 
yet even he got it wrong. Police say Cruz used an AR-15 assault rifle, one of the many automatic firearms that would be banned under the bill. Automatic firearms are already banned. Unless you have a ton of cash, a federal firearms dealer, and plenty of time, you can't go get one. So even they got it wrong. No wonder Caraway was confused. That's why we're going to Eagle Gun Range. Okay, here is a fully auto uh, AR. Here is what the normal person off the street can come by. It's exactly the same, fires exactly the same, is capable the same of 150 other rifles. You know, so, you know, this was a big liberal agenda. You know, let's, uh, uh, the AR-15, it's scary looking. Uh, it looks like what they've seen on TV. Uh, let's make it the target. How about this? How about we uh, hit at the core issue, which is school safety, and you stop scaring people? You, you can't walk in and buy a fully auto rifle unless, like I said, you got 20, 30 grand and a federal firearms dealer and a lot of time and a pristine background check. All right. Uh, let's, uh, oh, by the way, that, uh, that book, which will also clear the cobwebs on a lot of these. You hear the left all the time. You know, someone dies of a gunshot every 2.2 seconds in America. Okay, the truth you will find in damned lies and statistics. It's a book, Damned Lies and Statistics. It's by Joel Best, B-E-S-T. Um, all right, let's go to uh, Scott. Scott, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Scott? I'm doing well, sir. How are you? I'm doing good. Listen, I was going to let y'all know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to mention the name of the school. Uh, just because of the ramifications that could possibly happen. But my, I've got an 18-year-old and a 10-year-old to go to school where I went to high school, and the junior class is actually going to auction off for a fundraiser, or they're going to sell tickets, actually, uh, for an AR-15 and for a gun safe. Good uh, for them. Yeah, now that being said, I mean, the little town we live in up here, we're very conservative. Um, everybody knows to mind your own business, stay in your own stuff, and... You know, if somebody does decide they want to do something silly, then, I mean, there's going to be some pretty serious ramifications if that does happen. So, you know, everybody, I just wanted to, to throw that out there and and, uh, and make you aware of that and let you know that that's what they're doing. And I don't, you know, I don't necessarily know that that's for every school to do for a fundraiser, but, you know, for our school and for where we're at, I mean, it seems to be doing fairly well. So, Well, Scott, look, um you know, I, I grew up in a rural area and grew up on a ranch and, you know, that kind of stuff happens all the time. Nobody goes out and acts like a knucklehead or does something silly. Of course, then again, we don't have the liberal press descending on us all the time. You probably don't either. And I'm glad you didn't name the school because before you could hang up the phone, there'd be like five satellite trucks with reporters. Aren't you worried oh, about yeah. people? Yeah. You don't need that. Exactly. Exactly. But, uh, no, like I said, I just wanted to, this is my first time caller, I listen to you all the time, and I, I appreciate everything you do, just like everybody else does, uh, you know, that calls, but uh, uh, you're a good man, and uh, you're doing what you do, and like I said, I just want to kind of throw that out there, and uh, um, it, it, it's pretty sad, because back when I was, when I went to this same school, everybody in the parking lot had a 12 gauge or a 22 hanging in their back window. <laughs> I've told that that same story. I, you know, every truck in the place had a varmint gun uh, and usually a, a twelve gauge, and nobody yeah. ever got shot. How about that? Nobody ever got shot. Nobody ever said a word about it. So nope. You know, but anyway, that's my two cents worth. I just want to throw it out there, sir. And I appreciate everything you do, and you have a good day, Scott. Good luck to you and uh, the kids and the school. And speaking of raffling off something, we'll talk to David Prince from Eagle Gun Range tomorrow. Uh, every single penny goes to the family of the fallen Richardson uh, police officer. And if you want to donate, you can go online. Um, uh, there's a raffle for a great, great uh, pistol and uh, a rifle as well and a, um, a fire pit. Man, it, it's a pretty cool fire pit. We'll talk about that. I'll bring you up to date with that tomorrow and all of that money. Uh, man, you had a big part in raising that. So um, uh, that's that's good to hear. 
That'll do it for me. God's blessings on each and every one of you, whether you agree with me or not. That's always my priority. I'll be back for your afternoon drive. We start at 2 in the afternoon, 2 to 5, Monday through Friday on News Talk 820 WBAP. Even when you think you can't dig no more, that's the only way I know. That's the only way I know. That's the only way I know. The only way I know. Oh, you know it was uh...